Just turn with me to First John. Chapter two. First John, chapter two. And uh, just like to read three verses for our meditation this morning. First John, chapter two, reading from verse fifteen to seventeen. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lusts. For the one who does the will of God lives forever. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, would you show us, Master, what we need to understand from your word this morning? We open our hearts to you and we give you our wills, Lord, to change, to uh, challenge, and Lord, more than anything else, our prayer is that we would align with your holy will this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've uh, I spent a little bit of this week just listening to different uh, types of music on YouTube, and as I was doing that, I came across uh, just some lovely music uh, that was sung by uh, an evangelist many, many years ago, and. Uh, the songs were so beautiful, uh, he sang it so well, and uh, yet as I, I realized uh, the person that I was listening to, I realized that uh, at one point in his life he had got into sin, and uh, how that entire, uh, his entire life came to a halt because of that sin. And uh, I began to just think about the consequences of falling into the systems of the world because oftentimes that's what uh, pulls us away from God whom we ought to follow and whom we ought to love and uh, this this week's uh, meditation which comes out of first John talks about that John says do not love the world nor the things in the world do not love the world nor the things in the world and uh, basically he's talking about the systems of the world those things that are aligned against God those things that are aligned against the things of God and uh, we know that the systems of the world are completely opposite to the systems that God has for us when we look at the things that we have in the Bible we find that so often that's not the way the world will uh, look at the situations that we face and uh, as I meditated on this passage, I realized that do not love the world nor the things in the world is actually in the, in the present tense. It's talking about today. It's talking about uh, being an imperative. God is really saying it's a command to you, don't love the world. And then he goes on to amplify and says, because if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you is not in you and then in verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the boastful pride of life is not from the father but is from the world three things he says are from the world and not of the father first is the lust of the flesh the second is the lust of the eyes and the third is the boastful pride of life and he ends this, these three verses by saying, the world is passing away. The world is passing away. And if that's where you are aligned, then you're headed in the wrong direction. 
The world is passing away and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. And so basically it's coming down to a choice that we make. Are we going to align with the will of God? Or are we going to align with the will of the world? And the pull of the world? One will fade away. One will live on forever. And as I looked at that I thought basically it's just a matter of choice, isn't it? What kind of choices do we make in our journey, uh, in our walk with Christ? We hear of so many who started well and faltered. Started well and faltered. And John is writing this 55, 60 years after the death of Jesus. And he understands even at that point that that is the issue that people were facing. That there's a pull from the world which is against the things of God. And John very categorically states, if you are going after the things of the world, then you have forsaken the love of the Father. God's love is not in you. For me, that, as I listened to that, uh, as I read it, as I prayed into that, I thought that's a, a warning that all of us need to take very seriously. Because it is possible to start well and then slowly get caught into the things of the world. And the consequences of that are pretty, pretty sobering. James 4, 4, and if you have your Bibles, just turn with that. Turn, turn with me to James 4. Just turn a couple of pages backwards. In the latter half of, of, of verse 4, he says this, Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And he's really warning the church there. He's saying, be careful what the source of quarrels and conflicts among you is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members. And he's saying when these kind of things happen, you need to be careful that you're not buying into the systems of the world. Because if you are, if friendship with the world is what is important to you, then you have made yourself an enemy of God. Matthew 6.26 says this, What will it profit a man? if he will gain the whole world and lose his soul. Gain the whole world and lose his soul. Because the things of the world are temporal, beloved. And the soul is eternal. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and then loses his soul? So just let's look at it. I know that time is going by quickly. But let's just look at First John and and what he means by the things of this world. In verse 16 he says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. Three things. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Stephen Doe actually says that it's the three C's that uh, John is talking about here. The lust of the flesh is carnality. The lust of the eyes is covetousness. And the pride of life is cockiness. Cockiness, arrogance. Three C's, carnality, covetousness and cockiness. The three things in the world that will pull us. The cravings 
of sinful man, carnality, the desire to have everything that one sees, covetousness, and then the boasting of what he or she has and what he or she has done. Material positions and accomplishments come under cockiness. Proverbs 16.18 says this, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. You know, when Jesus was tempted, he faced these three temptations exactly. Satan came to him and said, You're the son of God. Turn these rocks into bread. And Jesus responded by saying, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He was appealing to his cardinal side, his physical side, the hunger that he had. And Jesus was able to rebuke Satan. And then he came to him and said, I will, and said, I show you all the kingdoms of the world. Look at all the things that you see. I'll give them to you. Covetousness. And Jesus responded and said, For thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt you serve. And then he said, You're the son of God. Go ahead. Throw yourself down. God will save you. Appealing to Jesus being the Son of God, the pride in that. How cocky can you get about being the Son of God? Are you willing to throw yourself down? And Jesus once again says, But it is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. <coughs> Three things, beloved, that can pull a Christian off the path. The pull of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and to think that everything that you are or have got is because of you. To appear to be cocky, the pride of life. I think for, for us as Christians, those are the three things that will pull us away from the Lord, will pull us away from doing what He wants us to do. And I think as we come to the Lord's table this morning, it would be good for us to check our lives, take a good hard look at our lives and say, is there carnality in me? Have I given in to the flesh, the desires of the flesh? Is there covetousness? Is, am I eyeing the things that other people have? The lust of the eyes? Do I desire what other people have in terms of possessions? Material things or even in terms of just desiring somebody else or are we cocky look at the things that God has done through us and think that we are somebody big you know beloved the one deterrent to getting back on the path the one biggest deterrent is pride is pride and it comes in all kinds of subtle ways including spiritual pride because Satan will always come to you and say that's not you you're an outstanding, upstanding member of the church and the community. 
it's not you. Don't worry about it. And the moment we allow pride to come in, we've actually bought in to the ways of the world. And Satan has us in a wonderful place for him where we are completely, completely useless for the kingdom of God. Everything else may remain the same. The way you do things, the way people look at you, even the way you think about yourself. And yet the question that you and I need to ask is, is there fruit in our lives? When you look at the parable of the sower, it talks about the seed that is sown. And the last two, the seed that fell upon thorns and the seed that fell upon good soil, it says, the one that fell among thorns received it with joy, grew, and then when things became difficult and the things of the world became alluring, then he left it and there was no fruit. For the one where seed fell on good soil bore much fruit. Ultimately, beloved, that is the litmus test of being a child of God. Not the names we bear, the positions we bear. The things we do or say, it is, is there fruit in your life? Can you look around and say, there is fruit. There is fruit. Very quickly, look with me at three scriptures and I'm going to close with this. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. This is Paul writing to the church of Colossae. And as he ends this letter, if you look at verse 14, he says this, Luke, the beloved physician, sends you his greetings and also Demas. Luke and Demas send you their greetings. Just move a couple of books down, Timothy, Titus and come to Philemon. Just that one chapter, it's a small book there. The letter of Paul to Philemon. Again you will see in verse 23 Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus greets you. Verse 24 As do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow workers. Again you will see the name of Demas. Turn with me to just a few pages back to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10 verse 9 Paul writing to Timothy says this 2 Timothy 4 9 make every effort to come to me soon for Demas having loved this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica for Demas having loved the present world has deserted me. There are only three mentions of Demas in scripture. Three. In two of them, he is a trusted friend of Paul. Working for the gospel. And in the third, he is gone. The love of the world took him. Do you know the span of years, beloved? Colossians and Philemon were written in 60-61 AD. Timothy was written in 67. Six years. From being a trusted confidant 
one who was carrying the gospel and then gone gone because he desired the things of the world more than the Lord God Almighty I just pray for uh, for us I as I pray for myself Lord give me longevity in your in your service help me to be faithful in what you have called me to do may I never get into this pulpit Lord if you are not center of my life and I'm not here to lift you up Beloved, that's my prayer for each of us as well. But somehow we move from glory unto glory and not downwards as we buy into the systems of the world. So subtly it happens. So subtly. And know this that the systems of the world are set up to bring God's church down it's set up to bring God's church down Satan's agenda is to completely break down God's will in the world and his agenda is captured in all the systems of the world which are contrary to the leading of his spirit I put myself right there with you all I'm not speaking to you I'm speaking to us saying Lord help us If there are things in our lives that we ought to watch out for and beloved pride is front and center front and center I deal with it all the time being able to say Lord if there is a shred of pride even in looking at cap and 16 years that you have blessed us lord if you find in me pride that this is because of me or i could have done lord forgive me i recognize that this is nothing but what you have built and you have allowed me to be a part of it but pride beloved is the one thing that keeps us from humbling ourselves before the lord and saying lord i have sinned i have sinned forgive me i've bought into lies i've bought into systems of the world i'm trying to denigrate your church bring it down what a costly love affair it was for demas what a costly love affair three times his name is mentioned and the third so tragic would you allow your hearts to be melted this morning by the lord would you look to him and say lord break me break those things that are stubborn in me Lord if you see any pride whether it is pride in what i have pride on whom i become pride in my bible knowledge pride in the way people look at me Lord whatever and wherever pride has got a hold of me Lord would you break it would you break it and i pray let's just come to his table this morning as broken people broken people before the lord asking him to remold and reshape us father move around this room as only you can 
In every heart that belongs to you this morning, Lord, we invite you to come in and search our hearts. Try us. And see if there be any wicked way in us and lead us out into the path of righteousness. Wherever it is subtly hidden away, Master, would you dredge it out this morning? Bring it to the top that we can quickly confess it and ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we wait on you, Master, in these moments of silence. Our Father, this is the bread that you have given to us which is so symbolic of the bread of life, broken for each one of us. And Lord, you have instructed us to partake of this bread as often as we can so that we are reminded that your body was broken at Calvary, that the veil was rent and that we have access to you, Master. And so to you we come, Holy Father, and we ask that you would search our hearts. Lord, in this proximity that you have given us, Lord, even as Isaiah saw the sin in his life in your presence, Lord, show us the sin that is lurking in our lives, Lord, that needs to be confessed. Lord, even as we dip this bread into this juice and, and eat it, Lord, remind us of that precious blood that was shed at Calvary for every sin that we have committed. And Lord, if there are ones who are here who think that they have committed something that is the worst thing possible, Lord, would you let them know that your blood covers, Master, that your blood covers. Lord, even as you prayed and blessed and gave it to your disciples so many years ago, give it to us today as a fresh new remembrance of what you have done for us, that we would come as broken ones to your table this morning. Ready to be remolded, Master, in the way of the kingdom. Lord, we forsake the world this morning. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.